Hi, everyone. Welcome, everyone, to the Teen Yet Dragons YouTube channel. This is our weekly school session, and today is a little bit different because we are filming with this set right here. So today we are not going to be uh, like using the same format so like oh question and such because I find that it is actually a bit hard um, to name the title of the video like this so I grouped up a bunch of questions throughout the week and then we're gonna put it into a show like that and it will be more organized and the stuff is gonna be more like click together and sometimes when I talk about a certain topic you know, a lot of those questions are actually answered, so might as well do it this way. So if you want to submit your question, make sure you go to our website, sign up for the uh, forum and so on, and you can talk there. Um, if you leave your question there, we will put into consideration for the next episode. Anyway, so let's get going into the school session. And today's topic is being a newbie towelist. Ah, so what's about it? Let's take a look. Uh, we get a close up right here. Ah, okay. So again, this is your Zifu. Okay, so um, if you have any question, make sure you contact us through the forum. Okay, don't send email. Okay, don't 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 email me. It's so hard to keep track. Okay, so just go to the forum and leave leave your uh, questions and such there, and we'll take it and group it into the next uh, lesson. Okay, so this lesson talking about newbie towelers. Newbie joining the lineage. Okay, newbie joining the lineage. What's so special? Well, when you first enter the lineage, you'll be kind of lost. Like, what am I supposed to do here? Okay, so you get an email from one of the Sifu in the lineage. Our lineage, you know, they have a lot of Sifu, not a lot, but a bunch of Sifu uh, to handle the lineage work every day. So they basically handle the email, uh, the, the back end stuff, and then take care of people who came in, so on. So if you are ordained, okay, meaning that you went to a website and you click that button and you say, okay, I want to ordain and you pay for it. Then you will be scheduled in for a ceremony. This ceremony don't require you, like do not require you to go to somewhere else. You just stay home and do whatever you're doing. It's us who actually do the ceremony um, on at our altar. So after that ceremony is done, you get a notification, they get an email, and we'll tell you, oh, it's done. Your town name is such and such and such name, Teen X, something like that. The first thing you need to do is to remember your name. <laughs> okay, you got to remember your Talus name. Okay, that is your name inside the lineage. This is your new identity. So remember that name and try to pronounce it if you don't know how to say it uh, and ask us to verify is that like how it sounds and so on, okay? So you will also be invited to line. Line is one of, the, of our big thing. How do you learn? You learn by using line. And of course it extends to like Zoom, Skype, YouTube, you know, other kinds of uh, method that allows us to show you or teach you um, with like the uh, audio and visual okay so as long as like we can communicate that's it that's how we teach okay so line is the first one and it's very important online you see you get invited right you accept the invitation you create your account and so on well you go on there as a towelist identity so make sure you change your name if you already have to have a line account change your name to the teen whatever okay for example your name is like uh teen bo okay so you write teen bo and then the chinese the english and chinese and when you write that we see you as teen bo right so don't use your normal ordinary name use the talent name that is a must. And then you will be uh, putting up your picture, right? Now, picture. Picture is a, is a big thing, you know. Like, if you see a picture like this. 
You know, it, it, it doesn't look good, right? And also, it's too much things around you. So, oh yeah. So learn to zoom in. Yeah, you can even zoom in even more. You know, and then after you took the picture, let's say your cell phone, crop it. It's supposed to be a one by one square, so you crop the side out, right? So you got that one by one square. Your face in the center, and it's bright, well lit. You know, look good. That's what you want to show. You want to have a nice head shot on the line, okay? So do not do weird things like you know. I have seen people send in pictures that cut off half of their face. Okay, there are people who take pictures with a lot of other things in the picture, and I don't even know which is you. Okay. Um, so make sure you specifically take a picture for that line. Okay, you respect the other people on there as well. They want to give you a nice picture to look at. You also want them to look at you, you know, a nice image. So take a nice picture with proper lighting. Okay, don't be like you know light above and then all the shadow over the face and that kind of thing. Okay, don't do that. Okay. Make a nice picture. Take a freshly taken picture, not one that is like, oh, I got a, like a passport photo, like from ten years ago. Yeah, you you don't want to do that. Okay, come on, use your phone and take a proper picture. All right, the proper respect. You know, you look at our picture; they, they all look nice. So you want people to have a good impression of you. You need to fix your picture. Okay. Now after the picture is done, you went into those rooms, and the first thing is see, uh, you see. There's a room, a line online, okay, called Tao Lobby. Tao Lobby is where you come on and it's like a lobby. Hi, bye, hi, you know, like that kind of thing. If you have a friend or something, you know, you take a friend to the lobby and say, Hey, uh, John, look, uh, this is uh, my, my temple, you know, that's where I go. Uh, this is my religious place. And you show people your, your stuff, okay? You can invite guests into the lobby and show them around or something like that. But lobby mainly is used for what we call cheng on. So every day you go and greet people and cheng on. You greet the higher, like your upper, the higher ones. So you have to cheng on to them. Uh, cheng on is like saying hi, saying bye, saying good night, good morning, that kind of thing. It's a special greeting. And inside our lineage, we have a template for this so that everyone is going to do the same kind of cheng on. And it's actually quite important. Okay. So you go in, uh, online every day and show up. When are you, wait, first of all, when are you going to show up? So you have your phone, you have a line installed, right? You go to sleep. You wake up. Huh? And then, do you like immediately go to the washroom or whatever? The, what do you do first? When is the time you come on and cheng on? Well, in the old days, okay, in like those uh, king's palace, uh, the royal palace, the, the, those people also have to do the cheng on. They have to find their upper that that uh, that is related to them, and they have to go and greet them before they start their day. Yes, before they start their day. So you don't like oh get up. Shower, uh, brush your teeth, and then eat your breakfast and do everything and, you know, do everything. And then you go cheng on. That's not right. Okay, the cheng on should be done before you actually start your day. So what do I mean? Well, you get up, okay. Uh, you have some time yourself to, like, get ready. So imagine you want to greet someone, right? You don't want to look like you're still in the in the PJ and then your hair is like all over the place, you know, you don't want people to see that. So in order to cheng on, you need to deal with your body and, you know, go shower, change, uh, do your hair. When you're like already there, you can go and cheng on. Okay. Cheng on means like you go and ask the other side to settle their heart into you so that you will be, um, like your heart will get their heart put in here and it kind of harmonize the energy between you two. And at the same time, your upper's energy goes to you. It's also a little kind of like a little boost of your own heart. Okay. So every day in the morning, you go and cheng on. 
So at night, you also go and ting on as well. So you go back there and say, hi, everyone, uh, good night, I'm sleeping. No. Just, the, you know what, there's, there's a trick. Just look at what they're doing up there. Okay, like, look at the other people at your same level and look at what they're doing. Copy their whole message. Yeah, that's a lazy way, but it works. Copy the whole message. Change their name to your name and then paste. Okay, it sounds very like cheating, but it is uh, a good way to do the ting on. First of all, you take the other one to like modify, right? It's still yours. At the same time, you avoid a lot of like stupid mistake, you know, like grandma mistake, typo and whatever things that, you know, sometimes you just wake up and your brain don't function, right? So copy and paste work very, very well and it's actually really quick. So after the ting on, you go into an other room to learn. So treat lobby as a like just come and then you go. You don't you don't stay in the lobby and start chatting, okay? So make sure you know that. Now next thing is after okay you went through the ting on and go into the main hall, the main samlo hall, samlong hall, those places. What do you do there? Now that is the place where you can chat. You can ask questions and learn and so on. Okay? So you go into the Samlo hall and you can speak. Now, what if I don't know what to say? Well, you look at what people are saying and throw a sticker. Okay, it's fine. Throw a sticker, you know, show yourself. It's fine. You don't really need, you don't really need to, like, be super talkative. But once you start at something, there should be someone coming along and talking to you. If you just sit and wait, nothing's going to happen and you'll get nothing. Okay? So make sure you learn to ask questions. In the Samlo Ho and the Sanlong Ho, those places, well, they are basically rooms for you to learn. The difference between the Samlo Ho and the Sanlong Ho later on, that you like, if you ordain to the Sanlong stage, you'll also be invited into the Sanlong Ho, right? The content that we will be releasing onto them. Uh, into these rooms are different. The San Long Ho is more advanced. So I will be also talking about more uh, advanced or brain fine stuff there, you know, like the more advanced theory about magic and so on, right? That's for the, the more senior ones who are ready to learn. Now for newbie, new, 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 newbie, you only need to go to San Long Ho, right? In the San Long Ho, it's more like you kind of uh, say something and then let each other bounce off that topic and then you kind of know more about what this is like here and so on. It's just a general idea. Okay. Okay. So we have the main, the Samlo Hall, Samlo Hall, right? Those are the main rooms. Huh? There might be other rooms that you'll be in, uh, invited to, such as there's a Fortune Hall. Fortune Hall is where you go and you look at other people posting their thing there daily and we or any one of us who are you know just there and uh, uh, we, we look at their photos and stuff we empower them you know we send magic power over we send help over so that's one of the things that we do all the time and for you you will want to like put stuff there so that people can look at that and say hey this guy needs some empowerment you need some help you know it's basically you're posting your photo or your alter's photo for uh, the help from other side, from the uh, upper level. You want the help, you want the boost, right? So put your photo there daily. And you're putting on a fresh photo. So learn to take a phone and go, you know, don't use the same photo and reuse because that's not good. Okay? Your intention, intention of that photo is, you know, I want to take this photo because I want people to empower me. That's the intention. Okay. So you want to take photo for that. Okay. So daily doing that, you can take photo of your altar, yourself and so on. And you're basically asking for some more protection, more blessings and so on. And your uppers are going to give you that. Okay. So basically that's uh, how it works with that hall, uh, the fortune hall. So your question might still be there. What am I supposed to do? Okay, I entered the lineage. What's next? Okay, I, I paid. What's next? You might be thinking about school, you know, like uh, I paid the tuition. Okay, the class started. I sit there and 
what's next? You know, like, is the teacher going to talk or something like that? Uh, now, here is what you should be doing. Okay? Here's what you should be doing. After you are in these halls, right? If no one's talking, no one is actually talking. Everyone's kind of quiet or maybe they're sleeping. You never know. Are they sleeping or not talking? Okay. Well, yeah, people are sleeping because they might be in other parts of the globe. Okay. So don't worry. Post something. Now start the talk. Post something. Uh, post a sticker. Show up, you know, like show up. Post a sticker. Show up. And then eventually someone around will be like, hey, you know, and there goes the talk. Uh, be more proactive. Don't always hide and wait. And then like when me or someone like, uh, for example, another Sifu, like Kwan Sifu, okay. And, and other disciples are talking. Okay. The, the worst thing you can do is you sit and listen to all that talk and think that it's something you should be learning. It's not like that. Okay. You need to try to get some direct teaching as well. Okay, don't try to steal the talking, you know, the teachings from another one. Because while I teach someone or, or the country will teach someone, right? The person is different. The way I want to approach it is different. You know, everything is different. So you can take that and then put it into yourself and think, oh, like, that's what I think, you know. You don't, don't do that, okay? If you ever do, you read by accident, whatever, okay, it's fine. Just uh, make sure you verify, is it like that for you? Don't just take answers as is, you know. You want to make sure that it is also the same for you. Uh, so ask question based on what you have seen, okay. You tell people, well, that's what I see. And then, uh, is it like this, you know, like kind of verify, okay, verify. So after all these line stuff, what's next? Uh, when you're on your own, what do you do? Well, you have your heart spell, right? So practice the heart spell. Ah, heart spells are very, very important. Heart spell, they are like the spell that when you the stomp, you're drawing from your, is it say like your bank account? Okay, it's like you're drawing the power from the upper. You're drawing that from the God. Like you're drawing the power out with the heart spell. So you got to practice the heart spell really hard. First stage, you need to know how to read all the stuff flawlessly. So it can be like, say two words, uh, uh, and then you like that. You got to remember it and you want to like be able to say it out fast. Okay. So without thinking, like when you're typing, okay, you want to not be like, yeah, you want to be able to do this while your head is doing something else. Uh, that is the way to go. So. Yes, you want to practice that a lot, but you want to practice it right. So do not stuck to the so-called heart spell that you were doing and you think you're right and you keep doing it without uh, checking up with your seafood, okay? Always, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't cost you a dime, okay? Pose those things on and ask questions. Okay, it's free to do. Right? You can do more. It's fine. So... <laughs> Just ask question, right? Verify, see is it right, and then you keep going. Ah, even you think you might be right, you could be wrong, right? Who knows? So try ask one question. So heart spell, right? So you got the line uh, set up. You got your heart spells. What's next? What's next? Okay. What's next is get yourself going. Ask question, and then there are things that you should really accomplish or learn during that stage. For example, in the Samlo stage, I would say you must learn and work toward uh, getting your heart spell cultivated. Okay? So you have to do some practice daily. Cultivate the heart spell. Ah, train that power out. Okay? And then there are Fu Head. Fu Head are like symbols. Okay? You learn those symbols and you can use them in your everyday life. So those things are also very important. You also want to learn that. Ah, full head, you know, the heart spell, and then set up the altar. The last thing, set up the altar. That's your ultimate goal, is to have an altar set up at home. The altar is like, you know, a person learning programming, they need the computer, right? So 
The altar is like your computer. It's so important. Uh, so make sure you aim to set up the altar. Two choices. One, if you're low budget, we have the low budget version. We call it a tin can altar. Okay, so you only need a tin can, uh, bowl of rice, and incense. You stop inside the can and so on. Okay. The proper way of setting up an altar, the official one, is like the one I have right there, okay, a bit over. Now, that kind of altar is, like, the first thing is the frame is bigger. The sun pie, the frame is bigger, okay? This frame inside is a piece of paper printed with the Chinese right there. The sun pie is a signage, okay? It's a signage. What does it mean? What is it trying to say? Well, the sun pie is there to say, now this area, this location, uh, it's for what and what and what God, you know, like there's a coat right there. Uh, and when you have the sun pie on, like you put the sun pie on the wall, right? And you start to assemble the whole altar together. You can communicate to the lineage upper, uh, like the, the power above. You can say the God and deity. You communicate with them. Even though for the newbies, you cannot listen uh, to what they say, right? When you take incense and burn incense in front of the altar, you make a wish or whatever things, okay, anything you do there, they can understand you. You guys are like connected. You can communicate. So this is the one thing you should be working for, which is getting your altar set up, okay? It does, yes, I know, it costs money, yes. It is not cheap, right? Setting up the whole altar, there's like different stages. If you want to like skip all the wait time and just buy everything you need, okay, it's going to cost up to the thousand. Uh, even the shipping and everything is very expensive, ready, right? So, well, if you're not ready to spend like a chunk of money into building an altar, I would suggest, you know, at least, at least, uh, you're starting with a small one and then you can add things on slowly now uh, just ask how to do it and when you do that at least you have a, a real uh, altar a real place right there that you can talk to your God okay so I'm being very, very realistic I mean you want to you want to pray and ask for help and such you want to talk to God right where like how can the God know how to come here right if you put your altar there, there's a portal you allow the God the deity to come in and uh you know listen to what you're saying and so on and interact with you. So okay, we went through a few important things. Now, what is the goal of Samuel Hall disciple? The goal. Okay, your goal is to go to the next stage. Ah, yeah, you enter the lineage, right? You're in Samuel Hall, stage one. Your goal is to go to stage two, okay? So whenever you're ready, you can, you can go. But at the same time, you want to go to stage two because you know why and you want that, okay? Not just because I told you. So what's the benefit of going to the next stage, okay? In going to the next stage, you have to like pay the ordain again and so on, right? It's not, not cheap. So why are you doing that? What's the difference? Well, going to the Sunlong stage is mainly, okay, remember this, mainly. Sunlong stage allows you to help other people, while Samlo stage helps yourself. So if you just enter the lineage and you're in the Samlo stage, you're ordained, right? Yeah, great, just practice those things that you can keep yourself safe. Okay? You are putting energy, ref like not refill, but you're filling up yourself with that magic power. You're cultivating for the foundation. That's what you're doing. In the Sun Long stage, you are uh, learning to output these power. You're learning to do stuff to the outside of you. Let's say your house, okay, need a cleansing. In the uh, uh, magic work you're doing, right, you, like in the Sun Long stage, really, you cannot really deal with pollution like that. You need to be in the Sun Long stage because now these things outside, they're like outside of you, okay? They're outside of you. Ah. So if you need to deal with anything outside of yourself, 
you need this unknown stage power. So it could be like, you know, your dog that's just beside you. It could be anything, anyone beside you, you know, they need some help. You need help? You need a sun known stage disciple in order to do that. So basically your goal at the Sam Law stage disciple is going to the sun known stage. That's basically your goal. Okay? Uh sooner or later, that's basically what you're aiming for. Now, repeat again, okay? A few things you must focus on when you're in Sam Law stage. Number one. Get your line set up and everything ready with a nice picture, right? Number two, you need to know your heart spell. You need to know your uh, a full head. You know, you need to be uh, aiming. Okay, last one, aiming to build the altar. Okay, building the altar. And then you aim to go up a level, some known stage. Now, building the altar can be time consuming though. Like sometimes... You know, if you build a cheapo altar, the tin, tin can altar, yeah, overnight you can make it happen. But if you're building the, you know, the big one, it might take more uh, time because you need to shop for the frame. You need to wait and so on. And it's, it's not fast, okay? And you also need to buy stuff, okay? So it's not fast. You might have to wait a while for your Dai Sifu to help you. Ah. So it depends, right, which altar you're doing. But I would say, if you are waiting for your Dai Sifu supplies and so on before you can um, like set up a nice big altar, do the small one. Later on, you can change it, you know, do the small one first. Uh, so basically, these are the things that newbies should focus on. Uh, the newbies, okay? You should focus on these things. Okay, so... Today, I talk about a lot of things about newbie stuff, okay? Because this month, we actually got a few newbies uh, into our lineage. So, you guys in the lineage might be kind of lost about what am I supposed to do. I'm in this tile lobby room, and I just, you know, keep seeing people flooding the room like that. What am I supposed to do? Like, how can I, you know, start start off? So, these are the things you need to know. Uh, so, don't hesitate, you know, if you're online... Don't hesitate. If you have question, ask right away and you want those answers to clear up your pathway. So you don't want to feel like kind of, huh? what am I doing here? You know, you don't want to feel like that. You want to be able to feel like, I know what to do. These are the things I need to knock down and uh, let's get going, you know, like that. Okay. So work on these. And uh, next week, we will be gathering up more question and then combining these things into one piece and uh, do the school session like today again. Okay, so thanks for watching, guys. And we're we're kind of shortening the clip a little bit. Usually it's like one hour, but now we shrink it down a bit so it's easier for people to watch. Okay, so we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe and like. Bye bye.